takes a Burger King on the hillside Where the strawberries used to grow Nobody seems to know It's strange how things change 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 Some buy their dreams with money, some pray at the Savior's feet. In a land of guns and honey, how do you spill relief? With two million homeless people living on the street. It's strange, I think it's very strange right now. This is strange right now. I think it's very strange right now. I think it's very strange right now. Yeah, when I look over my shoulder, what do you think I see? I see some other cat. He's looking over his shoulder. It's a wise guy is trying to act cute. Has he lost his mind? Or left it in another suit? We don't need no big excuse. We just need someone to speak the truth. It's strange. It's strange right now, those strange changes.
Perry back there on the drums. Dave on the bass. And Willie on the keys. And Jonathan on Jonathan. <laughs> the violin and uh, guitar. John and uh, uh, we are the illustrious ancestors. It is most auspicious to be here. Our fearless leader, John Cruz. First tune was uh, something that we just pulled out of the ether with a, a lyric I was starting to write called The Strange Changes. And the uh, next tune is uh, Mopti by Don Cherry. country backwards funky thing.
the station was the middle of the night. Cool, all that train was pulling out of sight. Come on now. Run up to the station and knocked upon the door. The man inside he said that train don't stop here no more. Hey, it's hey, train. I stuck him down the line. with a little Lotus Blackwell thrown in there. Standing in the foyer of the New York Public Library, Fifth Avenue and Forty Second Street. Need to look up a word and find out what to say to you. For when we find you. I'll put 
just to make you turn your head. Then all my spells and all my talismans I'm searching for you. Be redundant with you. The answer, and I'll say.
Can we start? I, with th I think they can handle it. Can you just drone in G a little Indian drone in G for me? So uh, I don't know how many years ago was it that I went to India, sweetie? Eight, nine. All right, this is a long story, but I think you can handle it. So I'm going to India, and I get a phone call from a guy I've never met before. And he just wrote a book on uh, George Harrison's spiritual life. And he wanted me to take five books with me to India to hand deliver them. They were rather large, you know, hardback books. Now, first of all, when you go to India, you never take any clothes because there's no reason to take clothes to India. All the, all the clothing in India is so cheap and so beautiful that you'd really be some kind of idiot to be carrying a suitcase there with clothes. And I said to him, man, I'm just bringing a mandolin and my flute. to India. He says, if I ship them, they'll never get there. Besides, every person that you're going to deliver a book to is someone you want to meet. They were all George Harrison's friends. And I thought, oh, what the hell, right? Meet a couple of friends of George Harrison, see what happens. So I took the books to India, and I went to music school for a couple of weeks, and was coming up on New Year's, and these guys were really busting our butts, man. I mean, if you were 10 minutes late to class, you were in trouble. And so, it was coming up on New Year's, so we thought, well, this guy Javier from Spain, a really good percussionist, said, hey, let's go out to the jungle, out past Bangalore. Let's go live in a, in a tree fort for a couple of days in the jungle. By the way, there's two kinds of tree forts. There's high rent, high class tree fort and regular tree fort. Get the high class because it has a little toilet in it and it's up higher. So we're out in the jungle. This could go on for a very long time. And I've got the books with me. I've got the books with me. Javier was in the habit of eating things that smelled really good, but were really bad for you. Like he would come up to you, and come up to me on the street with a sandwich and go, smell this. It's incredible. I go, you're not going to eat that, are you? Because you remember the last time you ate street food, what happened to you? You were sick for three days. So don't eat that. That's incense. Just smell it. And of course, he being a young man, and me being an older man with intestinal problems, I didn't touch it, and he ate it. And a few hours later, he, he was really in bad shape. He was turning pale green, kind of gray, pale green, moaning through the night. The, the guide gets to our tree fort at about 5 o'clock in the morning before the sun's coming up, and he's got eggs. He's got all these eggs that he made for us. I've got high cholesterol, Willie. It's not a pretty thing. So, he says he's going to take us out into the jungle for the next two or three days. But Javier is green. He's gray-green laying in the bed, moaning and groaning. It's a really good thing we got the high-class high tree for it because he had to run to the toilet every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes. Otherwise, he would have had to hang his butt over the ledge and you don't want to go in there. I still got the books, by the way. And I leave Javier there and I go into the jungle. Do you want the short story or the long story? I don't know. So I go out in the jungle and I'm with a guy who's about 20, 22 years old. 
And, uh, well, we start seeing all kinds of wonderful birds and some monkeys and stuff. Um, hey, there's an elephant or two. Don't get too close. They can't see you, but they can smell you. And that elephant's got a calf, so don't get too close. Okay. Then all of a sudden, we start to hear something screeching really hard and loud. Can you do some screeching? Really hard, really loud. And he says, come, 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 come. And he starts running. Well, I just ate five eggs because I didn't want this guy to make eggs and, and us not eat them. I mean, we would be these kind of rich Westerners that were wasting food and everything. And so I just ate five eggs and I'm running after like a 22 year old guy through the jungle. And like, you know, and I'm running after this guy in the jungle, and we're running not away from the screeching. Could you screech some more? We're not running away from the screeching, but we're running towards the screeching. We're running towards the screeching. I'm like, what is happening? But we're running, coming and running around this giant bush and stop. And there is a tiger eviscerating a boar about that far away. And the guide is standing there and he's got something in his hand and I'm hoping it's a revolver because that tiger could turn and leap in one second and rip my throat out. But he's got a little rock. He's just got a little rock in his hand. I'm not feeling good about this right now. I'm sort of wishing that maybe I was Javier turning green and laying in bed, you know? And he turns to me and he says, take picture, take picture, take picture, take picture. And I'm like, I'm not going to take a picture of that. It's horrible. It's really, you know? And the tiger looks up, face with blood coming down, and drops the boar right there and stares at us and runs off. By the way, I still have the books back in the tree fort. And everybody is standing there waiting to hear about the tiger. There's like 40, 45 people. The word got back. He had called his, his boss. And the word got out about the tiger. And we get back into town and everybody's standing there waiting to hear the tiger's story. And I'm like going, Look, you guys, it wasn't pretty. I, I wish I didn't see it, okay? It wasn't like Wild Kingdom or something. It wasn't pretty. It wasn't nice. It was murder. And this German woman standing there with her hands on her hip going, I have come here for the last 20 years and gone on safari, and I have never seen a tiger. Why you? Well, this has almost nothing to do about the books, does it? I'm trying to make it short, really. I'm trying. So you asked me about this instrument. So a few days later, I get back to music school, and they say, where have you been? Who have you played with? What have you done? And I said, well, I played with this DJ in Bangalore for about 10,000 people. It was really cool. And they said, you are a prostitute. So I kind of felt like maybe my days in Indian music school were over.
besides, I had some books to deliver. Remember the book? It's called Here Comes the Sun by Joshua M. Green. Yogeshwara is his name. So I fly to Mumbai. And when I get off the plane, waiting for me are about 25 Hare Krishnas with a big sign that says, Hare Krishna, John Kruf. And I go, oh boy. Uh, listen, um, I, 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 I got a room in the Holiday Inn, okay? So could, you, could you take me to the Holiday Inn? And they're like, no, 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 we have a beautiful room for you at the temple where you were supposed to meet Radhanath Swami. Ringo just called him Shamalama Ding Dong the other day at Ringo's big birthday. He was up on stage with Ringo and Ringo said, oh look, Shamalama Ding Dong's here. So, the long story is that I was playing flute in the garden at the Hare Krishna temple, which was literally a city dump that they turned into this very beautiful temple. And I played flute there. They asked me if I would play flute at the opening of the Hare Krishna temple. I said, you're going to have to call my college in New York and explain everything to them because I'm due back there in a couple of days to start teaching. And so the Maharaj of Chowpati, which is what his real name is, the Maharaj of Chowpati called my school and said, is it okay if we borrow Professor John for a couple of days? We are having a very important cultural event here in Mumbai, and there are going to be 5,000 people here, and we need him to play the flute, Hare Krishna. secretary comes out and says, Swamiji, we'll see you now. So I walk in and I sit down and I look at the sky. He's looking at me. 
and he looks like my cousin David from Chicago. And I say, Are you a member of the tribe? Are you a member of the tribe? He says, Do you mean, am I Jewish? I say, yeah, are you Jewish? He goes, yes. I say, let me guess. You're either from Cleveland or Chicago, because you look like my cousin David. He says, I'm from Chicago. And I'm like, cool. You into the blues? He said, oh yeah, I loved Paul Butterfield when I was growing up in front of, in fact, I, I play harmonica. I said, well, what's your name? He said, Richie Slavin. I said, oh, that's a nice name, Richie Slavin. And uh, you're Radhanath Swami now, right? Yeah. Cool. So uh, we spend the day, he takes me out to this beautiful farm out of town. And uh, we have quite a fine time. And, as I say, I wind up playing flute for the opening of the Hare Krishna temple. Well, they have a store in Mumbai, a music store. Oh, John, we would like you to take home with you an instrument. You should have a sitar, John. You should have a sitar. I'm like, I tried a bit. <laughs> you ask the story of this thing. So, I... I said, no, 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 I have a small apartment in New York City and I can't possibly have a sitar, it's too big and I don't want to learn another instrument. I, I've, I've really, I've got enough instruments. Thanks. I'll just take that little bamboo flute over there and I took a couple of bamboo flutes and everything was really nice until I started walking towards the door of the music store and out of the corner of my eye I saw this green thing and I went, wow, what's that? And everybody just stopped and said, Oh, you must have it. You must. You must have it, John. You must have it. And I go, I don't even know what it is. It's a bulba tarong. Everyone. One, two, three. Bulba tarong. Oh, well, we could say it one more time. Bulba tarong. Kind of feels good in the mouth, doesn't it? The other name for it is Royal Benju, because they don't know what a banjo is or how to pronounce it. So, we would like to invite, evoke the birds.
Ow! Don't ever ask me where I got an instrument. <laughs> Stay. I need a glass of water. Really? Water. Right. Oh my goodness. Isn't music the best? <laughs> Did you deliver the book? Oh, shit! <laughs> Take 